So, what have we here? An ailing patient, but one who is delivering consistent profits except for 2003. What on earth happened here? Barbara Spunk to Grand on the Christmas day. Should have kept that line for myself. She doesn't even know who Barbara is. So, let the surgery begin! Bloody hell, this I'm is great. I've single-handedly relaunched the satire boom. Now, look, Hans, I want you to be careful taking it out. Yeah, he's a big bastard, I'll give you that. Maybe I can break him down, cut him down to size. If you want, I could get the axe. The axe? Just a hand axe, Mark, not a felon axe. No, Hans, no axes. I could help, for a little sweetener, fiver. A fee? Oh, well, I suppose you never really sat on that sofa much, did you? Maybe just for about 100,000 hours. And I suppose you won't sit on the new sofa much either. I just need money, Mark. Yes, well, I don't want to pay you for domestic chores. That's why I'm abusing my management position to get you challenging work at JLB. I don't need to be challenged, Mark. I just need something to do in the mornings. Some purpose. I'm tired of staring at my own winkle all day. And, and careful bringing the new one in. Chipped paintwork and abrasions to the upholstery will result in deductions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Terms and conditions apply. This energy drink may cause anal discharge, etc. <sighs> Hasn't got a girlfriend, so he buys a new sofa. You can't fuck a sofa, mate. Take it from me. This suit. It's sapping my vibe, my powers. Can't think right. Yeah, well, why don't you get another job? You could explore that opening at the giant beanstalk. Catching the golden eggs as they fall from the arse of the giant's chicken. I mean, there weren't any jobs when I didn't want a job. And now I do want a job. There are, like, totally no jobs. Not just, like, there aren't any jobs, but, like, there are totally, quite literally, no jobs. You should just get a van. And with a van, it's like you've got an MBA. But you've also got a fucking van. Yeah? You're not just a man anymore. You are a man with a van. You get a van, Jez. We could be men with van. This is good. It's sexy, romantic, daring. I'm like a modern-day Casanova. Raffles the gentleman perv. No clothes. Shh. Raffles doesn't deserve clothes. Oh, he... He, he was down there, but he, he's gone. All right, Jez, I'm coming. Alan? That was some pretty dumb shit you pulled tonight. Uh, yeah, 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 I know. But the good news is I nailed the contract. Consultio is go. Wow, that, that's brilliant. Yeah, but here's the thing. I've had a think, and it's a biggie, Mark. But I need manpower. I need capital. I need you. Are you still in? Of course I'm still in. But can I trust you? Will you put your money where your mouth is? Of course you can trust me. All the crazy shit we've pulled over the years, JLB, Kettering, yeah. the marketing sales, yeah. shitstorm. We we're always there for each other, right? Yeah. Alan, you followed me. Suze. Oh, I see. Jeremy. Got sick of the real world? Want the soft play area? Why didn't you tell me, Mark? No, Al Alan, it's, it's not... Some wingman you are. But, but Alan, don't go! Johnson? <laughs> Alan, no, he doesn't deserve that. He, he got it for the wrong reasons, but overall, probably fair dues. This is the life. Bit of shaky, enormous plate of chips. And when Sophie goes into labour, we'll call a minicab. What's the big deal? This is a much more productive way of spending four hours than breathing in my instructor's second-hand Super King smoke. I could write a play in the time I'll save. Yeah, what's my play going to be about? A bloke, a genius, unrecognised in his own time. Mark Borrigan? And he loves, or maybe even hates, chips. Gerard. Hi, Mark. Tube up his nose, the tube is back up his nose. Oh, don't tell me I'm the first one here. You're the first one here. You're early. I came a bit early because I just wanted to say, obviously, what with the whole Dobby situation, I know things have been difficult between us, but thanks for inviting me. Not a problem. Oh, old mate. Oh, I'm in a love contest with someone who's one blocked sinus from intensive care. Drink? Oh, shouldn't. Uh, stomach acid levels are still playing up. I don't know if you noticed, I've got the... Oh, no. She's not going to want to kiss around the mucus duct. Nice. I I'm just on lasagna duty, but I'll make you a wiki. Enjoy. Might tell Dobby he came too soon. <laughs> Big of you, inviting him. I thought it would look petty and vindictive not to. And as a petty and vindictive individual, I have to take extra care not to appear petty or vindictive. It's kicking off. Can you help? I, I need to make sure Gerard gets incredibly fucked. Booze, drugs, whatever, before Dobby arrives, just to be on the safe side. 
Chemical castration. Classic. All right. You've brought a snake? Yeah. Oh, God, he's brought a venomous plus one. All these young spunks swarming about, you need a USP to gain a market share. Whoa, snake. Massive. What's it called? Don't know, fucking rental snake, innit? It, it is safe, isn't it, Hans? Yeah, it should be. Red next to black, jump the fuck back. Red and yellow, cuddly fella. But red is next to black? Yeah, I don't know. It's fine. He's been milked, I should think. My God, is this Johnson's recession residence? Not much to look at, but then apparently Sugar actually operates out of a refurbed autofix garage. Mark. Hello. Hi, Alan. Don't come in. Oh, no? One question. Yes? Do you want to make shed loads of freaking money? Uh, yes. Then come in! He's taken a shine to me. He singled me out. Here's my pitch. New management consultancy. You and me. I'm the face, you're the um, tendons and the grizzly shit under the surface. What do you say? Oh, my God, I, I, I don't know. Really? Look at you. You're like the fat girl who's just been asked to the school disco. Well, yeah, my, my only hesitation is I don't have any actual experience of management consulting. So... In, fire 30% of the workforce, new logo, boom, out. You are now a fully trained management consultant. <laughs> Great. Follow me. Finally, I'm being groomed up the pink carpeted stairway to business abuse. Welcome. To the nerve center. Okay. Well, there's no point in maxing out on overheads until the clients come flooding in, right? Right. Smart. V very smart. First things first, let's uh, hook up the printer. Oh, Alan's pajamas. Probably still warm. Under the duvet. No one should see under the duvet. <sighs> Good old Vista. People give it a bad press, but I'm never upgrading. Why would I? It just feels like a good pair of jeans. You fancy making us some builder's tea? Wow, amazing. I'm working with Johnson. OK. I've grasped the talcum powder of power. Could slip it into my pocket as a memento. Hi, Suze. Mark, tea's there. Will you tell him his phone's charged? Oh, uh, right. Sure. Suze, where's the big scissors? Have you moved the big scissors? Tell him they're in the cling film drawer. Right. Got to go out. Audition. Oh, brilliant. What is it? It's a stage version of that movie, Crash. You know, the one where all the different races are all the same, but they're all a bit different and it's all fine. The blackies and the whiteies, etc. Uh, that's an interesting message. It is, actually. I'm playing a whitey, as you can imagine. Right. Typecast again. Exactly. <laughs> Builder's tea. I suppose that's middle-class slang. We don't coin much slang in the middle classes. Pants. Mare. Ooh, I'm having a mare. This Builder's tea came out pants. Right. Ah, uh, Sue says your phone's charged. Did you make the bed? Uh, no. You're not my wife, Mark. I had a wife. I don't need another bullet in the head. OK. Righty, righty. I made his bed and got his tea. I am his wife. First things first. Funding. I reckon we need to each put in a tour. Good? Oh, uh, right. Two Just thousand? Two million? Two success. pounds? Equal partners. Two K. Straight down the middle. Lamps and JT, working together in perfect harmony. What do you reckon? So I suppose if, if I got an equity release on the flat, then... Yes. Great. Got to be cash, yeah? Cash? When the banks collapse, the stud holding cash is going to get a lot of blowjobs. Know what I mean? Oh, OK. Fine. Oh, my God, I'm bumping fists. I'm in bed with Johnson. Oh, for freak's sake. You going to need to print anything today, Mark? I, I, I don't know. No, I, I should be fine. That was the correct answer. What's going on? There's a rumour in that huddle of third floor Daleks that it's a test, but the phone pigs are sure there was a fire in the farmyard kitchen. The maintenance man's pulling his pud in the porter cabin. Come on, your management, Corrigan, get it sorted. Right. <laughs> Charles would be a fine thing. That's the thing people say, isn't it? Apparently the reset code needs to be authorised from Frankfurt, if you can believe it. Mark, can't you reset it? Charles would be a fine thing, Lisa. I know what we should do. Coffee run. Corrigan, 200 lattes. <laughs> good, good one, Jeff. Chance would be a fine thing. A, a, a fine thing indeed. Hmm, saying that too often now. Uh, everything's under control. We'll, we'll have it all sorted so, soon as. Qu quick as. Oh, thank God. Johnson. The great helmsman can march us to a grain depot and we can bed down for the Come night. On. Listen. So. Listen up, I just got in from Aberdeen. And I want to warn you that you're probably going to be hearing a lot of rumours. But 
I can reassure you that Stefan Strauss and the rest in Frankfurt are doing everything they can. Talks are ongoing and everything's looking promising. But I need to inform you that you're all officially unemployed. What? what? But no! I, I've just started being a boss! What about my Danish sofa? What about my keyboard? I didn't get to show Dad a business card. The doors are locked. JLB Credit UK is no longer existent. Thank you and good night, England. Uh, uh, Alan, Alan, where do management go? Uh, Alan, let me in, Alan! The last beamer out of Saigon. I'm at the mercy of the Vietnamese peasants. Please don't put me in a bamboo cage. Wow, so everything's just gone tits up. I mean, how mad is that? Head fuck or what? Yes, Jeremy, it, it is indeed a head fuck. Exactly. He was just saying a bunch might go down the crown. The crown? You know, down the crown. Everyone goes on a Friday. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, da down the crown. Great. One morning and he fits in better than me. How was the interview? I'm sorry? The job interview that meant you couldn't come to the antenatal class. Oh, uh, right, yeah, good. Pretty good. Fingers crossed. Not a total lie. There was an interview. I was interviewing myself for a job as a playwright. And by Jove, I think I got it. So how was the class? Pretty gruesome. Good, actually. In the end, Jeff came down. Jeff? What? Why? To pervert pictures of ladies breastfeeding? Because I asked him. I felt weird going on my own. <sighs> Fine. Let him get on with it. I'll be fine with my high-fat foods, which will eventually kill me, and my play, which is obviously never going to happen. We actually came up with a new name I really like. Oh, yeah? What fresh hell? Spock? Mal? Van Dross? Yeah, I'm pretty set on Geoffrey. Jeff? As in Jeff? After Jeff? Oh, yeah. Hadn't actually thought about that. No, it'll be Geoffrey with a G, not a J. After my Uncle Jeff. Oh, God, I've created a father vacuum and Jeff has rushed in to fill it like some toxic gas. I want my baby back. Leave the name into the baby, Mama, if I were you. That's what I did. You have kids? The twins. I'm always going on about me twins, aren't I? I don't think you've ever previously mentioned the twins. Of course I have. The twins. The fucking twins. I'm always on about them. I bloody love them, too. Yeah, I've got them in my phone. Oh, hold on. Have I? Ah, oh, I'll never forgive Orange if they've wiped the twins. Oh, that is... That is shitty. Where are the bloody twins? Great kids. Bit lazy. Bit on the lazy side. Very rarely pick up the phone to their old man. How old are they? How old? Ooh, seven or eight? What's fump in English? Five? Yeah. They turned fump five years ago. So, what? Pair of eighters, I reckon. I bloody love them too. Oh God, is that going to be me? Am I going to be Hans, Supermark, the crack-smoking Mexican restaurant waiter with a shirt and bow tie, but no trousers or pants? Oh my God, it's actually going well. I'm in it, girl. I'm Plum Sykes. I'm at the hub of London's social world. Peaches, Geldof and Gorby will probably be here soon. And the lasagna's a palpable hit. How are you finding the lasagna, pal? Mm, great. Thank you. I think that's actually the tuna you're on at the moment. Glass of bubbly? Sweet. Look at me doling out the shower. I'm the greatest man who ever lived. Goodwill to all men. Did I just say goodwill to all men? Hey, man, look at us. I know. I'm having a good time. So am I. I mean, not actually, but it's like I am. Only negative is no Dobby. If it peaks before Dobby gets here, I've wasted good party. Give her a bell, let her have some flavour. What, like start a message and, and then be like, stop it, Julio, grab your own cocaine, I've got too much tit in my mouth. Exactly. God, everyone's going mad for the lasagna. Who knew? Your mates are loving the tuna. Yeah, they're not my mates. Gate crashes. What? They're just some men who forced their way in here and are eating my lasagna. Dude, it just means we're a hit. Jeremy, they weren't invited. If, if there was no one here but us and them, it would be a police matter. Of course he doesn't care. He didn't spend hours reducing the passata. Mm. You got any more, mate? It's finished. And uh, listen, mate, who invited you to this party? Um, Mike. Right, Mike. And uh, which bottle did you bring? Can you please identify your bottle? Well, mate, <clears throat> we're not going to be any trouble. Look, you've got to go. You can't just walk in here and eat my food and drink my booze and try and have sex with my women. My women? Look, we'll be good boys, promise. <clears throat> Excuse me, everyone. I'd like to make an announcement. These two gentlemen are party crashers, so I'd be very grateful if none of you spoke to them for the rest of the evening. There is an exclusion zone around them, a cordon sanitaire. Thank you. Gail and Elena's big day. It's going to be 30 degrees today. I'm going to boil in that morning suit. 
Oh, it's great being a wedding guest. You get to be an unpaid extra in the climactic scene of someone else's rom-com. Jeremy, what are you doing? It's six in the bloody morning. I'm thinking about Elena and watching Jaws. Oh, God. Have you even been to bed? Don't you think you've had enough to drink? Um, oh, that's a thoughtful question. Uh, no. As it happens, I don't think I've had enough to drink. I'm going to carry on drinking until they catch Jaws the shark. The shark isn't called Jaws, Jeremy. The film is called Jaws. Of course the shark's called Jaws. Here comes Jaws, Jaws the shark. Mind he doesn't bite you with his enormous jaws. Anyway, thank you very much. Your phone woke me up. You know what I get like if I don't get my full eight and three quarter hours? Oh my life, it's a text from Elena. Thinking of you. She's thinking of me, Mark. Or at least she was six hours ago. With three kisses. Oh, my God, this is massive. I'm going over there. Don't be ridiculous. If text kisses were real kisses, the, the world would be an orgy. No, it, it's the day of her wedding. What are you going to do? I don't know. Who knows what I'm capable of? I mean, I proved that on the lake. The untalented Mr Ripley. Where's the car keys? You're way over the limit. Give me the car keys, Mark. No. All right, let's get you driving. I'm teaching. I hate to be negative, but you, drunk of your noggin, me in my pyjamas, doesn't feel like the ideal time for me to restart my driving career. Hello, I need your best driver and your fastest car. No, two hours is no good. I need someone immediately. OK, well, how about you get off your great fat anus and come and drive me yourself, you self-important hick? Hello? So this is cool. Nice to get to know the neighbours. I said hello to one guy in the hall, but he was, like, really old. There's an old woman as well. Have you seen her? Hmm. Got to get off the neighbourhood watch. So, uh, tell me, Elena, what do you, like, do? I'm working part-time as a legal secretary, human rights law, asylum seekers, torture victims, all that jazz. But my real passion is music. Oh, that is so great. Oh, God, she's perfect. A musician who devotes her life to helping losers. I'm like grade 8 violin and a bit of piano. That's just so cool, cos, um, I'm a musician too. What's your main instrument? Shit, I dabble, you know. I toot, I strum, I bongo. Oh, I love drums. Play me something. Uh, that's, that's not a bongo, that's just a small table in the shape of a bongo. Oh, so when you're not bongoing, do you, like, work? Danger. Uh, I was a male nurse for a while. Why did you stop? Disgust at having to help people in need. The white coats couldn't handle my whole Patch Adams approach. I believe a person should be treated as a human being, not a mere set of steel pipes. Oh, come on, I've got to think of something impressive. What the hell have I been doing all these years? Could be a dad she'd like to fuck. Only thing I've got in the locker. And, of course, uh, the big news is actually that I'm, uh, I'm going to be having a kid. Uh, are you in a relationship? Oh, no. No, 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 no. No, no, a million times no. No, she's a friend and she was desperate and so I was all like, yeah. I'm a very strong feminist, so I believe women should have whatever mad thing they want. That's so cute. Because I often think that children are our future. Yeah. And also, I'm just really into the whole man-baby thing, you know, teaching them to tie things to other things and, you know, holding a baby in the palm of my hand whilst making an espresso. You know? Yeah, Russian men are all probably infertile. Thanks, Chernobyl. A new boiler. Surely the least enjoyable way to spend a thousand pounds. At least throwing the money out of the window, you'd see the scrabbling mass, the hate-filled faces. I have spent a cool grand on acquiring the resumption of an equitable temperature. Yeah, too right. I'm freezing. Let's whack it up to 29. 29 degrees? Are you insane? I don't actually want it to be 29, but you've got to give it something to aim for. It'll get hotter quicker. No, it won't. It's either on or off. You set it, it achieves the correct temperature, it switches off. Oh, sure. You set it to 23, it'll be pootering along. Oh, yeah, 23, easy, yeah, nearly there. Wouldn't you rather... Fuck! 29? Christ, let's get cracking. Got to generate some serious heat. And then when it hits 23, we're suddenly all like, click, sorry, already there. And the boiler will be like, what the fuck? You want to try to trick the boiler? Maybe I dodged a bullet with Alan. I can take my two grand and head to the hills with the banditos. All set, got your swipe, Bob. Check. Remember the opener? Hey, can I get some nachos or margaritas to kick you hombres off? Great. Now get out there and work that tush. Tits and teeth, Mark. Tits and teeth. Oh, God, this is terrifying. Just me and the public and some laminated menus for protection. OK, here goes. 
Hi guys, party of four, let me show you to a table. I'll grab you some menus, but first, can I get some nachos, margaritas, or something soft for the little guys to kick you hombres off? I improvised. I'm the Miles Davis of Mexican restaurant waiting staff. Just some menus and a jug of tap water, please. Uh-oh, skinflint alert. Oh, what have I become? It is legal right by God. Mark? Hello? Alan? Oh, fuck. Oh, no. You got the message, then? Message? About leaving here, you've obviously got it. Uh, yeah. I was worried. But hey, you're here. This is Colin and Naz from Sales Direct. Uh, hi there. Shit, Daddy's hat is back on. This is my business partner, my wingman. Mark Corrigan. Mark? Oh, not now. Table four? Sure thing. What was that? Nothing. Are you working here? Yes, uh, of course. I've, I've mentioned that, I'm sure. So, you're all set for menus. No, you definitely didn't mention that you'd started working in a Mexican restaurant. Well, you know, it's, it's just part-time. I'm still your wingman, Alan. It's, it's great to meet you guys. What sort of area are you interested in us taking a look at for you fellas? Table four, Mark. I ought to be going. Cool, cool. I'm just settling these guys in. Can I get you hombres some nachos or margaritas to kick off with? Well, we're grateful you've done all this uh, up front. Oh, don't thank me. Thank the Microsoft Office family. PowerPoint, Excel and Word. The three amigos. So, what's your M.O.? Well, that... Can we get some menus, please? Hold that thought, Colin. Hold that thought for one second. Just got a cold shoulder of the ship munchers before I service the big swinging dicks. Can we order some drinks? Nope. OK, right. Let's get into this, mother. <clears throat> we're going to have the early bird menu, please. No, you're not. It's 803. OK, Mark, look working with Colin and Naz here. I think what we need is two executive teams. Uh-huh. OK, smart. Super smart. I'll do the consulting, the number crunching, the meta-analysis, and the business plan while you cover the fucking off and getting us a nice cold picture of Bud, OK? See you around. So, fellas, let's get into this now. How did this happen? I woke up Branson, end the day, humping shit, cash in hand for super hands. Um, where do I go? You're riding bitch. On the bitch rack. God, Hans is my boss. Jeremy's probably my line manager. Sorry for the delay. <clears throat> While I was waiting for the food, I actually sketched out a potential invite for the JLB Survivors fundraiser. This is just a satirical sideswipe at the corporate culture. Star Wars? If you stroke my down, I shall become more purple than you can possibly imagine. <laughs> yeah. Isn't down for a duck, not a cat? Yes, but it's got to be cat because of purple. Does it? Yes. But if you stroke my down... Yes. I mean, it's definitely got to be a duck because... You're overanalyzing. But people will be laughing so hard, they won't be thinking about what it does or doesn't mean, Jeremy. Where's my fucking nugget? I've dropped about six social classes since this morning. Where's my onion rings? This is... this... this is... This is... You've fucked this order right up, haven't you? Hey? Haven't you? Hey? Answer me. Yes. Right. I'm having your chicken wrap. Cheers. You can have your chips. You can have this little bit of matter. Oh, for once in my life I've done enough physical labour to merit a high-carb meal and all I'm left with is an indeterminate puck of gristle. So, Mark, obviously a little dry at the start. We bit dusty bin. <sighs> I don't like you, Jan. But you really pulled it off towards the end. For a first-timer, you really impressed me. Wow, thank you. Good old lovely Jan. So, I'll be in touch about organising some more tours. That'd be marvellous. Oh, there was a file you left on the computer that you borrowed from us. Shit. Was there? Yes. I had a look at it. I'm sorry, but it was an application from you for a full-time job with a loss adjusters, and I just wanted to make sure that you would actually be available to work for us. Oh, yes, I'd, I'd absolutely be available, Jan. The, the, the loss adjusters application was just insurance, if you'll pardon the pun. It was actually quite a good pun. Is it over? How do you do? Shit, then shitter, but then good. Great. I was feeling a bit guilty about not coming. You know, I think I've been taking Mark a bit for granted since I started seeing Elena. You know, it's been Elena this, Elena that all the time. Elena, Elena, Elena. And that's wrong. Anyway, Elena said I should come and make it up with him, so here I am. Right, well, it's just talking to Jan at the moment. So I can delete that file on the laptop then? Yes, please. File. Ah. Uh. That wasn't actually Mark's fault, that file. No, no Jeremy, you, you don't need to do this, really. 
the porn on your computer, Jan, the hardcore pornographic sex film on your laptop, that was me. I'm fundamentally a sex addict. I wank 10, maybe 12 times a day. It's a disease, a wanking disease. I done the downloading and then I done a wank. I'm, I'm so sorry, Jan. This won't be a problem, will it? Um, I, I'll uh, give you a ring, Mark. Superb. That's the single nicest thing Jeremy has ever done for me, and it's completely ruined my life. You lovely shithead. I got you your favourite bread, Impson's bread. That's lovely. Thanks. And I got you some truffle oil to drizzle on it. Everyone's into truffle oil. Jamie, Nigella, those two men who look like burglars on MasterChef. Wine? Sure. I've been to fucking Hastings. In Kent. How was work? I'm going to lose my job and everything has turned to shit. The IT guy at work has found some bad stuff that I've been downloading on my hard drive. Bad stuff? Do you mean porn? Horny porno? Yeah. You watch porn at work? Now and then. I didn't tell you because I thought it might bother you. Of course it doesn't bother me. It's hot. Do you, you know, while you're watching? Masturbate. God, this is great. What am I going to do? They're going to sack me. Look, I'll think of a plan to sort this out. But first, let's get you some Impson's bread and odd oil. It's really sweet that you went to Hastings to get me some bread. You watch porno, you watch porno. That's the best thing in the world. What the hell are you doing in there? Jeremy said I needed a lie down. Oh, that was nice of him. Come on, let's get you home. I'll take you home. Oh, no, don't, don't take him home. He, he's fine. He's, he's just had a bit of a disco nap and now he's ready to partay, aren't you, Gerard? You all right to stand up on your own now? I think if, if you wouldn't mind just holding me for a bit. Oh, for God's sake. Could you call us a cab, please? We'll share. The same cab? But, but, but you live in Catford and, and Gerard lives in Ballam. That, that's miles apart. It, it's illogical to share. It's crazy. I want to make sure he's OK. Mm. Plus, late at night, minicabs. They're licensed, Gerard. Dobby is not about to get raped, if that's what you're trying so snidely to imply. So let's just cut the bullshit, shall we? It would be more fun going home together. Oh, right, now we get down to it. They're not going to have a better time going home than I'm having at my party. Hello. Yes, I'd like two cabs, please. I need two cabs, one going to Catford and one separate one going in a completely different direction to Ballam. What's going on? Gail just asked Elena to marry her. She's got a proper hetero ring and everything. Wow. Oh, my oh God. God, she's grasping at straws. This okay. is going to be so embarrassing. She said yes, but maybe she thinks no is yes in English. Oh, Jeremy, isn't this amazing? This really is amazing. Oh, God, she's the best thing that I've ever had in my life, and I thought she was slipping away. You can't know how bad that felt. Mm. Champagne. <laughs> what the fuck? Whoops! Oh, the thing is, she gave me this ring and it was so romantic. God, this is so weird. Oh, is this all right? It just feels so right! She's so suggestible, like a sexy robot anyone can hack into and program. There it goes, lesbian kiss, and no one minds. Where have all the homophobes gone when you need them? God, people are so fickle. What are we celebrating? Gail and Elena just got engaged. If it makes you feel any better, Dobby and Gerard are leaving together. Right. Who's got my rental snake? I'm going to lose my deposit. Wasn't it in the salad spinner? Empty. We need to find him while he's still dizzy, because if he gets his shit together, he's going to be pissed off. Oh, brilliant. So there's a snake at large in my flat. I suppose I'm going to have to buy a mongoose now to hunt it. If your mongoose eats my snake, I will soon. So now I have to flat share with Jeremy and a snake. Still, there's a way out. Nana's cottage, the seed van, could get a dog. What would I call it? Warwick Kingmaker? Lambert Simnel? Two Arch. Former Foreign Secretary Lord Carrington? Oh, God, this is all too much. This is all too bloody much. Jez, I think I might have a bong hit. A bong hit? Yes. I've organised this whole party and I haven't had a single bit of fun all night. So, yes, I want a bong hit. Light it there and inhale there. You've been watching. Hmm. Maybe he'll become a pothead and he can start buying the stash. 
Are you okay? Fine. Fine. It's, it's not affecting me. <clears throat> it's not affecting me at all. Actually, I think I am beginning to feel something. Yeah? I, I think I'm beginning to feel great. Great. I'm having a good time. I'm enjoying my party. Yay! Sophie, you can have whatever you want. I'll sign whatever you want, but I don't want a dog. A dog? What dog? I don't want Carrington. I want... Dobby. Dobby, don't go. Stay here and marry me. What? Marry me. I feel fat terrible. It's still there. Where's the puke point? Where's the puke point? Puke point three. Puke point three. Snake! <laughs> Oh, poor guy. I'm not even going to mention that he was stitty about my puke points. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, everyone. Come on, Gerard. Gerard gets Dobby, and I get a pukey bucket of snake. You are paying for that snake to be dry cleaned. I bet you probably can get reptiles dry cleaned. That's the world we're living in. Oh, what a disaster. Love is all you need. No, actually, beetles. You also need a person to do it with. Beetles. Shit! Hello, Jeremy. Oh, great. Could turn her down. Yeah, dream on. Second lay of the night. This is the worst party ever. Ugh. I'm doing something I hate for someone who doesn't like me in order to drive around somebody who, as yet, doesn't even exist. Great. I was hoping for a David Attenborough-type instructor. He's more of your chain-wanking ringtone fanatic. Um, what? Oh, OK, if you like, I can open the window. Right, what are you waiting for? Well, sh shall I just go? That's a general idea. Oh, fuck! Soda! Careful. Are you OK? It's dislocated, so it hurts when you drive like a dick. What did you stall for? Because I can't drive. That's why I'm having a driving lesson. All right, fine. Go again. Easy on the clutch. He hasn't even told me which pedal is which. He's assuming an incredible degree of knowledge. Bloody hell, you are terrible. Look, I, I, I'm sorry, but I can't drive. Maybe in your career as a driving instructor, you may get one or two pupils from failed states like Eritrea, where they have no licensing infrastructure, but basically already know how to drive. However, I feel I should warn you that the vast majority are going to be people like me who can't drive. All right, keep your wig on. That's a retro put-down. Or maybe he thinks I really do wear a wig. Did, did you teach automatic? <laughs> That's it. I resign. I give up. No more lessons. The machines have won. I shall take to the hills and live with the tree folk people. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. How are you doing, Soph? Uh, I think I'm having a baby. OK, let's go. Uh, yeah, right, OK. Uh, but should we just quickly wait, wait for Jez? I'm about to have a baby. We need to go. Yeah, but, but Jez will be really, really pissed off if he misses it. He's excited. I don't even want Jeremy to be there, Mark. Let's go! Right. Yeah? R really? Hmm. Kill my unborn child in a road traffic accident to save face? Doesn't feel great. Oh, here comes another one. Oh. Uh... OK. Got to tell her. Got to come clean. Take the humiliation. OK. OK. Go! 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 What? Gail! She's coming back. Down the road. We need to get out of here. Go, go, go. Pedal to the metal. No need to shout! You fucking stall! Shouting will not make me a better driver, Jeremy! Fucking go! We need to get out of here. If Gail sees me here, everything's finished. Just go! Th they're having an affair. Oh, right. It's complicated. Go, go! Fucking go! <laughs> there! You see? I I've stalled again. And, and do you know why? It's because I'm nervous. And I'm nervous because you're shouting at me! OK. And relax and engage fucking reverse gear and go! I'm not going! Why is it not going? Why isn't it going? You've got the handbrake on, you cock! Are you OK, Mark? Normally, I, I wouldn't make such a basic error, but as you can see, this is quite a stressful situation. Uh, move it, you asshole! <laughs> Shit, I can't find the biting point! Where's the biting point? Why are you indicating? Don't indicate! Fucking go! <laughs> to alert other road users to my intention! That's it. Come on. OK. Mirror signal manoeuvre. Mirror signal manoeuvre. Come on, get out. You can't drive. Of course I can drive. Out. No wonder you failed your test, you did. No, look, no, Jeremy, wait, you're drunk! Wait! If anyone should crash and kill my child, it, it should be me. Go on, so. Jeremy, it's Gail! No, fuck! Ah! Oh, shit! 
probably have to retell this moment in Crown Court, and I've already forgotten exactly what happened. Oh, my God. What happened? I did it again, Mark. I did it again. What? You didn't pass. You were going to drive me and you can't drive. Um, I tried to kill her. I went for her. I can't believe you, Mark. I can't. What are you all doing here? I'm having an affair. We're having an affair. We've been doing it behind your back, and now it's all come out because I keep on trying to kill you. Oh, Jesus. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Uh, I really need to get to the hospital, Elena. I'm sorry, but we really need to talk. It's a big year for me, so it's kind of urgent. For fuck's sake! Soph, you, you can't drive yourself. Yeah, well, I think I'll be safer than with the pissed murderer or the unlicensed liar. Oh. Jeremy, we, we, we can't leave her. She's not safe. We've got to go with her. So, OK, Soph, here we are, going to the hospital with you. I, I'm right behind you. So if you need directions or, or oh. tissues or anything, don't hesitate to let me know. Yeah, tissues and directions, good. Don't have any tissues, don't know where we're going. So, got those covered. Oh.